Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this crisscross market bag, which you can see here in the photo in front of you. And then as well, if you head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com, you'll find some more photos of this particular market bag there as well. So this is the bag here. I'll just uh, pull back a little bit so you can see a little bit more of my sample. This market bag is worked in a worsted weight cotton and uh, it's quite lacy in texture. Once you get a hang of these cross treble stitches, it is quite easy and fairly quick to make. So uh, this is a great market bag. You can use the colors as I have used here. It does have a, quite a little bit of stretch uh, because of these cross stitches and uh, as far as colors you can use these colors or you can mix and match uh, to make it your favorites. So for this pattern today you're going to need approximately 460 yards, probably a little bit less, of a worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm going to be using the Pima Cotton by Lion Brand Yarn. It's a 100% cotton, it's super soft, and uh, I love the uh, colors that they have in it. So this is what I'm using today. You're going to need, if you're using the same color scheme as I have, you're going to need four different colors. So I'm going to be using this dark gray color, which is called Pewter. Uh, you're going to need about 160 yards of your first color A. Uh, your color B, I'm going to be using a lighter kind of pink color here called Mademoiselle. You'll need about 100 yards. For color C, I'll be using uh, this rain cloud purple color and you'll need 100 yards. And then 100 yards of your final color and I'll be using this light gray called Stone. Along with that, you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, and you'll find links to these items in the description of the video. Also in the description of the video, you'll find a direct link to the free written crochet pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. And if you're following along, this is uh, this market bag is part of the marvelous market bag crochet along that is currently happening on my blog. And again, uh, details about that can be found in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, I'm excited, I hope you are too. Let's grab our hooks and our yarn and get started. Our market bag patterns today are worked from the bottom up. So we're going to start down here with our bottom. They are worked in rounds. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and then you're going to chain four. Now one thing to note in the bottom of the market bag, the chain three at the beginning of each round does count as a double crochet stitch. For round one, you're going to begin by working 11 double crochet stitches into that fourth chain from your hook. So in that very first chain, work 11 double crochets. Your chain three will count as a stitch, so in the total at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 12 double crochet stitches. This is 9, 10, and 11. So now including your chain 3 there at the beginning, you should have 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Once you have worked your 11 double crochets, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain 3. For round two, you're going to begin by chaining three, 
and then working one double crochet stitch into the same chain as joining. So including that chain three, you'll have two stitches coming out of that first stitch. You're then going to work two double crochet stitches in each chain all the way around. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 24 stitches. And you can join with a slip stitch at the top of your starting chain three. At the end of your round two, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch and you're ready to begin round three. For round three, you're going to chain three and into that next stitch, work two double crochet stitches. So you have your chain three coming out from the same stitches joining, then into the next stitch, work two double crochets. Double crochet, one double crochet into the next stitch, followed by two double crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work one double crochet into the next stitch, followed by two double crochets into the next. At the end of round three, you're joining in the same stitch, or in the first stitch, your chain three. And at the end of round three, you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round four, you're going to chain three, which counts as a stitch. Double crochet, work one double crochet into the next stitch. And followed by two double crochets into the next. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work one double crochet in each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next. Repeat all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round you should have 48 stitches. For round five, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Next, work two double crochets into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Continue all the way around at the end of this round, you will have a total of 60 stitches and you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch.
For round six, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next four stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. At the end of this round, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and you should have a total of 72 stitches. For round seven, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. You will have noticed by now that we are increasing each round by 12 stitches. So your circle will be growing larger and larger. Next, after you've double crocheted in each of the next four stitches, you're going to work two double crochet stitches into the next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. and two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next five stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch, and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 84 double crochet stitches. You can then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. For round eight, you're going to chain three. You're going to double crochet, work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. and then two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. and two double crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around, join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round you will have a total of 96 stitches. For round nine, first I need to join with the slip stitch in the top of my first stitch from round eight and then round nine you're going to chain three work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches and then two double crochets into your next stitch. 
next work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. You're then going to repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round you will have 108 stitches in total. For round 10, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Next, work two double crochets into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around, two double crochet stitches into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. Uh, join with the slip stitch in that first stitch once you come all the way around. At the end of this round you'll have a total of 120 stitches. At the end of round 10, you're, uh, you should have a fairly large circle there in front of you. Uh, it's going to measure, let me see here, approximately 11 inches across. Okay, so at this point we're done our increase rounds. For rounds 11 and 12, you are going to chain one, single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So beginning with that first stitch, single crochet, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch, chain one, and, uh, and work that round 12. At the end of round 12, we are going to switch to our color B, and uh, I will show you how I like to change colors um, at that time. So go ahead, work two rounds of single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain one, single crochet in each stitch and uh, then meet me back here at the end of round 12. I'm here almost at the end of round 12. I have one stitch left so I've worked my two rounds of single crochet stitches. At the end of your round 12 as I mentioned before we're going to want to change to our color B. So this uh, way to change color works uh, for any kind of project, it's a great way just to change color or even just add a new ball of yarn. What you're going to do before you've worked uh, that last stitch, you're going to have your color B ready. And you're going to work this final stitch by inserting your hook, so this is a single crochet, yarn over and draw up your loop. Now instead of completing the stitch with your color A, you're going to drop it Pick up your color B, place it on your hook, and pull through those two loops. You can then pull those two ends tighter, just to bring the stitch in a little bit, 
And then as we're at the end of round 12, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You're now set to begin the market bag body. So what we're going to do for round 13 is we're going to start off for the crisscross market bag by chaining four. This chain four is going to count as a treble stitch. Next, over the next four stitches, one, two, three, four, we're going to work our first crossed treble stitch. To work the crossed treble stitch, you're going to yarn over twice, insert your hook into that next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. You're then going to yarn over again, skip the next two stitches, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're then going to yarn over and pull through two loops four times. So you're working all of these loops off of your hook. There's one, pull, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through your final two. You now have to work the top part of your cross stitch. So you're going to chain two, yarn over, and now bring your hook down and insert your hook under the two kind of horizontal bars there at the center of your stitch. So you're just going to insert your hook under those two stitches, yarn over, and draw up a loop. You're then going to yarn over and pull through two loops twice. So work all those loops off of your hook. And that's your first crossed treble stitch, stitch made. You're going to continue working these cross treble stitches all the way around your market bag uh, back to the start of your uh, round 13. So I'll work the next stitch with you. Yarn over twice, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, skip the next two stitches, and insert your hook in the next stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. I'm going to work all these loops off of your hook, so yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through your final two chain two, yarn over, insert your hook under the middle two loops there at the center of your stitch, yarn over and pull through those two loops, and then complete your stitch. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. You now have two cross treble stitches made. So continue working those crossed treble stitches all the way around when you come back to your starting chain four you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that chain i'm just working my final crossed treble here and when you come to your last one your final one is going to be worked into that same stitch as joining the final leg of it. So work that final leg into the same stitch as joining uh, and then uh, complete the stitch. Once your stitch is done, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that chain four. You're now all set to begin round 14 and 15. So for two more rounds, you're going to simply repeat that final round. So uh, round 13. So start by chaining four, 
work your first crossed treble stitch starting by inserting your hook into the next stitch yarn over draw up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over you're going to skip the next two stitches which is actually this chain two space insert your hook into the top of the next stitch yarn over draw up a loop yarn over pull through all the loops on your hook or pull through two loops four times until you've worked off all the loops on your hook chain two yarn over insert your hook under those middle two stitches those middle two bars at the center of your stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so each of your cross stitches are going to be worked directly over top of one another so your next stitch is worked insert your hook in the next stitch complete the other leg on the other side you're skipping that chain two space in between and then completing your stitch so you're going to work two more rounds in uh, your color B and then at the end of round 15 you're going to switch to your color C at the end of your round 15 uh, you're going to want to switch to your color C and how you're going to do that this round is I've worked the first half of my crossed treble stitch so up to this point here where I'm going to chain two I'm still working in my color B and then going to yarn over insert my hook under those two loops at the center of my stitch yarn over and draw up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops at this point you're going to drop your color B pick up your color C and place it on your hook and pull through your color C is then ready to go you can pull that color B and see a little bit tighter there you're ready to go you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that chain four now using your color B I'm going to just place my two tails there over top it kind of secures them a little bit before I draw through just like so you're then ready to start now with your color C and for the you're going to use your color C for the next three rounds and you're going to work three more rounds of those crossed treble stitches so rounds 16 17 and 18 using your color C work three rounds of cross treble stitches then you're going to change to your color D which for me was this gray color work three rounds of crossed treble stitches in that gray color so those are rounds 19 20 and 21 switch back to your color A and then meet me back here so that is a lot you're going to work three rounds in your color C three rounds of cross stitches in your color D and then meet me back here and we'll be ready to finish uh, the top of our bag and our bag handles at the end of round 21 this is what your work will look like I have the bottom of my bag here three row rounds of my color B three rounds of my color C three rounds of my color D and then in that last stitch you'll want to switch back to your color A we're now going to work the top of our bag so for round 22 with that color A you're going to chain one you're going to work one single crochet into each stitch and two into each chain space all the way around so one in the first stitch and then two stitches into each chain two all the way around so you're working the single crochets into the tops of your X uh, cross treble stitches there 
and then two into the chain space. Do that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. At the end of round 22, you'll join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Now for the next two rounds, for rounds 23 and 24, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet into the next stitch and into each stitch all the way around. So you're going to work two rounds of double crochet stitches join with the slip stitch into the top of the first stitch in each round and uh, then continue on with the next. So uh, work those two rounds, rounds 23 and round 24 and meet me back here. At the end of round 24 join with the slip stitch in your top stitch for round 25, you're going to chain one, single crochet into that same stitch as joining, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to the end, you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Now once you have worked that final round 25, you've joined with a slip stitch in the top of your stitch, you are then ready to begin to work the handles on your bag. To work your handles, there's no need to fasten off at this point. You're going to begin by working uh, a chain of 50 chains long. So start the beginning of your handles, uh, and the handles are worked in rows you're going to chain 50. There's 10. Twenty. Thirty, there's forty, and fifty. Now if you'd like your handles to be longer or shorter, you're welcome to adjust the length. So once you have worked your fifty chains, you're then going to count and skip the next 29 stitches on your market bag. So here's your start. You're going to the next 29 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 28, and 29. So count and skip the next 29 stitches which brings me to right here and you're going to want to join with a slip stitch into your next stitch so there should be 29 stitches in between the joins on your bag you're then going to turn your work so that you're working in between the two joins of the handle and slip stitch into the next stitch. Now working along your chain, you're going to begin by working one single crochet into each chain stitch all the way along. Now it might take a little bit of fiddling in order to get it so your chain is not twisted but you just want to turn your bag turn your chain 
and then work one single crochet stitch into each chain all the way across. So this row is going to have a total of 50 single crochet stitches. Now in the process of working your first two stitches as they are here on mine, uh, they might be a little bit tight. I like to work into the back bumps of my stitches despite them being tighter in places um, simply because it gives a nice finished edge on the other side. I'm just going to try and force my hook in there. There we go. Once you get those first two worked, they should come a little bit easier. So then single crochet into each stitch all the way across that chain and then join with a slip stitch in the next stitch once again working between the two joins uh, on the market bag. I'll show you what I mean when I get there. So work those single crochet all the way across. At the end of that first row, once you have single crocheted in each stitch all the way along that chain, you're going to come back to your bag and once again, so working in between the two places where your handles join, you'll want to slip stitch into the next stitch on your bag. You're then going to want to slip stitch into the next two stitches. So you're going to do three slip stitches all together. Slip stitch in the next stitch and then one more and two more. You're then going to turn your work. You'll now want to work row two. There's no need to chain one and row two you're simply going to double crochet into each stitch all the way across the handle. When you come to back to the other side of your market bag you're going to skip the next two stitches on the market bag and slip stitch into the next on the other side and I'll show you uh, what I mean once I get across there. So double crochet into each stitch all the way across that handle. At the end of row two, once you've double crocheted in each stitch all the way across your handle, right here, you're going to skip on your market bag and again you're working in between the two places where your handles join. You're going to skip the next two stitches on your market bag and join with a slip stitch into the next stitch, like so. You're then going to slip stitch into the next stitch on the market bag and turn your work. The final row of your market bag handle is going to be a single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. When you come to the other side, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the next stitch on your market bag. At the end of your row four there, or sorry, row three, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that next stitch and then fasten off. You can then uh, later on either now or later go ahead and weave in those ends but your first handle I'm just going to see if I can pull back a little bit here your first handle on your market bag is complete. You're then ready to go ahead and start the other handle. To find your placement for it, you're going to take your market bag and counting from the outside edge of the handle there, you're going to count across 
uh, 29 stitches just as you did before. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 29 is right here. So into the next stitch, that's stitch number 30, I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to join it with a slip stitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply repeat uh, those rows 1, uh, 2, I guess it's 4, including the initial foundation chain. You're going to repeat the rows that you worked for your other handle here. You can then fasten off, weave in all of your ends, and your market bag is complete. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. There's uh, a few other market bag crochet patterns here on this channel that were all part of the marvelous market bag crochet along. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.